spring has sprung. But never forget, the month that just went by, April, is the cruelest month, breeding lilacs out of the dead land. Read T.S. Eliot. Let's do a spring feast for May, a Maytime feasty poo. What we're gonna make today are Fanny Craddock's puffs, which are sort of a puff pastry appetizer. Slightly suspect, but we're gonna try it together. I'm not sure if you, a huge piece of puff pastry with filling is something you wanna eat prior to dinner, but we'll see. We'll make them small and see what happens. We're gonna make some French, little tiny French onion soups, super, super chic. Almost like a shooter, but a little bit bigger. And then we're going to have, no, okay. We're gonna have rabbit that's raised on a farm where it's outside, you can watch it on the closed circuit television. I encourage you to source meat carefully. So rabbit, a la moutarde, which is mustard rabbit. It's essentially mustardy cockle ham, but with a rabbit. And then we're going to have a roasted rainbow shard. Very simple. Then we're going to have couscous. Ah, you forgot about couscous. And for dessert, we're gonna have the easiest, most fancy dessert called a clafouti. So easy. You can literally make it on the spur of the moment. It's that easy. So let's have a spring feast. Look, my papers aren't creased. Ta -da! <laughs> clafouti. Patootie. Clafouti, the easiest dessert I think we've ever made on the show besides maybe macerated fruit. I mean, this is very easy and usually Flawless. Miss Lydia Tooley, AKA Funfetti, the daughter of my dear old friend, Ian Tooley, whom I miss very dearly. This might be something you could make pretty easily for your parents with any sort of fruit that you think looks beautiful. Funfetti, let's try to make a clafouti, patootie. Uh, this is very, very simple. It's basically pancake batter. It's kind of a Dutch baby. You can use any fruit that strikes your fancy. You can use peaches, strawberries, bananas is a little weird, but you could use you know, anything that's like delightful and yummy. Blueberries, anything you'd like. So we're gonna use the old trusty Amarino cherries because I forgot to buy fruit before the shoot. <laughs> three eggs. One, two, three, three eggs. I'm just gonna homogenize these quickly. I'm gonna add a cup of milk. This is whole milk. The better the milk, the better the clafouti. Homogenize. You could really do this if you made a mistake and you're like, oh, my cake didn't work, or oh, damn, I forgot to make a dessert. And you can serve it hot or, or room temperature, not cold. Even though I ate it the next day and it was pretty good out of the fridge. I'm gonna use a little bit of my Hylula vanilla seeds. Just putting in some seeds just to make it Vanilla tasting. I suggest you buy your vanilla products from them or King Arthur Flower. This is Vanilla Plus, which is vanilla essence with the beans. So we're basically done. We're gonna put in two tablespoons of melted butter, which is not nuclear. It's not super hot, because I don't wanna cook the eggs, right? Now I've put my oven at 325, and I've put this cast iron pan in the oven. So when the clafouti hits it, it's gonna be hot. I'm gonna put some salt to give it. Now, you can put lemon zest in here. Uh, you can put nutmeg in here. You could put almond essence in here. That's actually quite common and sounds pretty good. Let's put some almond essence in. I'm gonna put a little bit of almond essence. You know, amaretto would be much better, but oh well. And then I have a half a cup of sugar and a half a cup of flour. Whipping it until it's real good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm whipping it until it's smooth. You really don't need a mixer for this, guys. In fact, I probably wouldn't use a mixer for this. I could use a, a balloon whisk, but I'm not gonna bother dirtying another whisk because this is how easy this dessert is. I'm now going to pour the clafouti into this dish. Clafouti in dish. Cherries. I'm just gonna dot cherries in. Quite a few. You can use fresh cherries, obviously. I mean, blackberries would be really good. You don't really have to macerate them before, but it makes it even more kind of special if you do. Macerate, it's basically um, letting fruit rest in a little amaretto, sugar, and lemon juice. 
But these you don't need to do that with because they're in this incredible syrup. Uh, it goes in a 325 oven and it puffs up. Don't take it out until it's golden brown and puffed up. I cannot tell you how long that takes, okay? It's up to you. So you can put this in when you're, cas if it's a casual dinner in the kitchen, you can put this in when they sit down to eat. If you're making it before, it doesn't matter. Just don't serve it out of the fridge the first time they have it, serve it warm. But I'm just saying, it doesn't take that long to puff up. Here we go. Don't ask me why that's in there, I don't know. Clafuti. Patootie. So, uh, Mrs. Joan got a little too hot in her bed, so she wanted to cool off on the tiles. <laughs> because she got too warm in the bed, so this was necessary. Look what happened. If you get this in a restaurant, it wouldn't have this big bump in the center, but I don't care. And it also goes down, by the way. Kaflutti. You know, it'll deflate also. It's already deflating, as you can see. It's kind of a delicious dessert. <laughs> so let this cool, and then uh, you can cut it in slices. It cuts. I greased the pan a little bit. Don't forget to grease the pan a little bit. You can cut slices of it. And you put a little powdered sugar, even though Reggie doesn't agree with it. A little ice cream. Pretty good dessert. French onion soup. It's not French. It's just onion soup, guys, okay? I've never understood that. It doesn't make any sense. I can't eat it because it's full of onions, but French onion soup is a big fave. Now, normally it's made with beef stock, but we're going to make a completely vegetarian French onion soup for the vegetarians in your life. And I'm going to give you a little tip for the crouton on top. You're supposed to serve it in this humongous brown bowl with cheese melted all over the top of it. Don't do that. You can make little individual ones. And what we're gonna do is make the croutons and sort of leave them with the cheese. And then we're gonna broil them at the last minute before we serve the soup and just put them on top of the soups. So you're not broiling the soup and you know what I mean? So this is just an easier way of doing it. We're gonna take some onions and cut them very thin. If you don't have a mandolin, this is kind of a drag. Cut from root to stem, not this way, okay? So you want this kind of onion. So I'm keeping my finger on the, the root so I don't mandolin the root. Careful of the mandolin, the deadliest thing in your kitchen. I'm making little teeny thin slices and we're gonna caramelize this. Now, you can, you can add a little sugar when you do this if you choose, uh, but the onion has sugar. So it's gonna caramelize on its own. I'm using red and white onions. It's usually made with beef stock, which gives it a richness and a hardiness, you know. But uh, we're gonna make it veg. We got a lot of requests when we asked you guys for suggestions. Ooh, the mandolin isn't sharp enough to stop the, the crying. We got a lot of requests for soup. We got a lot of requests for fish and chips, which is interesting. And people wanted a garden tour, which we can definitely do in June, David says. I'm sure Nick will cut to the picture of David in the garden. You can make this a day in advance or you can make it in the morning and leave it on the stove um, and then just reheat it. You can make it four days in advance if you want. It's just soup. So the first thing we're gonna do is put a large quantity of butter in the bottom of this pan. So I'm gonna melt that in my beautiful Raffoni pan that's incredibly efficient and awesome. I'm saving this, as you know, for cake pans. All right, now I'm gonna start caramelizing the onions. All right, onions, it's time to caramelize. I'm putting some salt. I'm starting to make my soup. So a soup is essentially a loose sauce. So if you think about soup, Chicken soup. How can I make chicken soup really, really chickeny? Start thinking about it as a sauce base and you'll make good soup. So I'm essentially making a onion sauce that's loose. I'm gonna saute these until they're soft and then I'm gonna add some brandy. That's lovely, not a lot. Just to give it a little depth. 
and uh, then we're going to add the stock. But we don't do that until we see caramelization. These are turning a nice golden brown. Okay, I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit. I'm going to put some brandy in, a little bit of brandy. Watch out because it could flambe. Cook out the brandy a little bit. A little white wine. Cook that for a little bit. And uh, then we're just gonna fill it up with stock. But first of all, I'm just gonna taste the seasoning. Wow. I'm gonna use this whole container. Now, I'm gonna do a little secret, which is to mimic the depth of the beef. I'm personally gonna use a tiny bit of porcini powder, just a little bit, like that which will give it even further depth of flavor and a darker color. Turn this up a little bit. I'm gonna use a little more stock. It's a different color than the one you get in the diner. But that's not the end of the world. It's done, basically. I'm just, now I'm just heating the stock. Tasting it for salt. Mm, it's really good. For a person who doesn't like French onion soup, it's delicious. <laughs> So you see how that kind of darkens it? I suggest you buy porcini powder because you can use it for a lot of stuff. So you want your onion soup to simmer until it kind of comes together a little bit, melds, um, and then you can turn it off and store it. But this is how you make the croutons in the easy way, okay? Instead of broiling them with the soup, which can make a big mess. So. Think of your container. In our case, we're serving them in individual containers. Think about the top. How thick should this be? I think it should be about that thick. And we'll make an extra one because it looks like it might be really good. <laughs> You're gonna take some Gruyere. Uh, cut, don't serve the plastic parts, obviously. And the fun thing about cutting these off is then you can do this. And you're just gonna grate some of this here and sprinkle it on top. And then that can go in the broiler at your leisure. So you wanna do it like this, kind of press it a little bit so it doesn't immediately fall off. I'm gonna put a little pepper on top. If you wanna be really fancy, at service you can cut fresh chives over the melted cheese. You can put these on a small plate in your fridge for as long as you need to do it in advance. And then all you do is broil that right before you serve your soup and place it on top. Yum mania. Y onion mania, I should say. Yunion mania. The first thing I'm gonna do is show you this hideous photograph. Uh, in the bottom of the photograph are these mammoth hors d'oeuvre, uh, which we're gonna make. Now, she puts snails in them, which snails are fine, but it's a pretty hard sell I wouldn't use snails. I think you can use whatever you want. Cut up lobster, anything you'd like. This is an enclosed puff. It's fancy. Okay, so we're gonna make one that is very spring-like. I'm just gonna make like a sort of a salad, and then I'm gonna roll out some puff pastry and put it in inside <laughs> with some butter. Let's see what happens. Parousse, king of knives. I'm just gonna cut these mushrooms. I have wiped them, I have not washed them, because as you know, you don't ever wash mushrooms. I'm just using mushrooms to give the salad body. I'm not gonna use a lot of mushrooms. And I'm not gonna cook them. I'm gonna cook them in the packet so they will be um, nice and firm. I wanna tell you, if there's any Kate Bush fans left in the world, Allegra. You and me might be the only two left. I was fooling around on the internet. I found this live record of hers from 2016. It is, I'm sure you've already listened to it. It's an absolutely incredible record. It's called Before the Dawn. Really, really superb. If you're a Kate Bush fan, it's a must listen. People say to me, how can you like Joni Mitchell and Kate Bush? They have such weird voices. Well, they do. I don't like them because of their singing. I like them because of their songwriting. And, you know, I admire their singing, but uh, they're not my favorite voices. Jackson Brown, that's up there. Don McLean, Jim Croce, <laughs> Paul Simon. But the weird thing about Paul Simon, now tell me if you agree below, okay? Great songwriter, 
But to me, a song is really brilliant when the music sounds like what the song's about. Like if it melds together. The only example of his that does that for me is that song, America, which is an incredible song. He's written 3,000 brilliant songs, right? But they seem cold in a weird way to me. I don't know if, do anybody know what I'm talking about? Into this, I'm gonna put some oregano, which I'm pulling off the stalk like this and chopping with my amazing Perusi knife. Parusi. Now I'm just gonna take some rainbow mix, which is, um, it's like watercress and baby, baby, baby uh, greens, okay? And I'm just gonna roughly chop these. I'm gonna kind of roll them into a chiffonade and then just go like this. And then you just turn the chiffonade one thing and do this. And a nice thing to do if you've never done it is to make an herb salad. So good. This is our filling. It's very bright and light. It's not luxurious. I'm gonna put a little sort of salad dressing on here, kind of. A little bit of oil, tiny bit of vinegar, and some salt and pepper. And I'm gonna put a little bit of Aleppo pepper, which is that amazing red pepper that is bizarrely not spicy, but it tastes like it's spicy. Such an incredible product for color and for flavor. So see that? It's just like a springy mix. I'm just gonna taste this for seasoning. Mm. Let's roll out our puff pastry, which you have defrosted in the refrigerator, not the counter. Why? Because uh, on the counter it will melt. A Little bit of flour, not too much. This is a nice piece. Okay, here we go. Always move it to make sure it can move. That's the rule, okay? Not too much flour because you don't wanna have raw flour. But we want this thin enough to be not like a Big Mac. <laughs> but I think it's great. I think it's great to bring back old things that nobody makes anymore. I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna cut squares, okay? So, uno, dos. Trace. Now, I'm gonna paint the entire thing with egg wash. This would also be something a kid would enjoy, I would, I would think. Uh, you can also just paint the corners, but why would you bother being so particular? Just paint the whole thing. I mean, I guess you could make this a lunch, right? With um, kedgeree or something in here, or rice dish, or fish, or shrimp, or lobster, as I said, or curry. I have the oven up at 420 to puff the pastry, okay? Now I'm gonna try to fill these and make them into puffs, which should be pretty hilarious. Putting a little bit of filling in the center of each one. This is gonna be impossible to close. I'm just warning you in advance. Fanny yelling at, what was her name? Mary? We always forget her name. Come on, Sarah. You know my Sarah now. She's going to help me at this next stage. Hey. Sorry for that noise. There's a big internet chain about um, what happened to that lady that got yelled at. And then we found out that Trisha Rose from Rough Linen used to work for Fanny Craddock, the incredible lady who runs the company that makes my beautiful pinafores and many, many other gorgeous things. Okay, so that's a puff right there. It's starting to melt, so you gotta go sort of fast. Folding and pressing. Okay, now these are gonna open. I'm just telling you they're gonna open because they will. I'm gonna do this as much as I can to seal it and also to give it a gloss when it cooks. All right, in the oven they go. Uh, you take them out when they're brown and puffed. There's really no, no timing. You just have to keep looking at them. So if you have any pause in between when you make these and when you bake them, you should put them in the fridge because it'll set up your pastry a little bit. You know what I mean? Press down those connections. They're, these are gonna break open. But I thought it'd be fun to make them just because they're in the book. Here we go. You'll know when they're ready, when they're brown and puffed up. That's when they're ready. Good luck, little puffs. Some of them opened as predicted.
Uh, this is a rather substantial hors d'oeuvre, if you ask me, Harold. <laughs> uh, let them cool before you start packing at them to get them off, but don't let them cool all the way because then you won't get them off. I'm just gonna check one to see if it moves. Oh, it's lovely. Um, so yeah, you can serve these warm. I wouldn't serve them cold. Mammoth hors d'oeuvres from the 1970s <laughs> with a yummy, fresh filling. Cocktail puffs. Ta -da! We're gonna make a traditional French preparation of rabbit, which is basically mustardy coco van rabbit called lapin à la moutarde, which is classic. It's on every bistro menu in France. And it's made from rabbits. Now people don't wanna eat rabbits because they're cute. So are chickens. So are pigs, so are cows, so are deer, so are fish, okay? So to separate an animal morally because it has a cute face is a little bit suspect to me. So if you're gonna eat meat, you have, one of the things we have to accept is that it's a living creature that has a heart and a soul and a brain and is cute. This rabbit was raised humanely. You can go to this particular farm and look at the rabbits running around. I took this rabbit apart. Your butcher will happily do that for you if they carry game. This is kind of considered game. If you want the experience of taking it apart, it's, you know, it's part of teaching yourself that you are cooking a creature and a creature that has limbs and things that you have to learn about and how to cook them. If you did buy it from a butcher and he broke it down for, or she broke it down for you, of course you... You wouldn't be a dinner party if you didn't. Now listen, quick note about that. Sometimes you have to look around the shop a little bit because the boss or whatever hides the tip jar sometimes. I don't know why they do that, but anyways. So I took this uh, beautiful rabbit apart with my Parusi from Dan Maltwood. And then in between, when we broke for lunch, I went to the mailbox. And what did I find in the mailbox but my new Parusi? It's the Forager. It's a very beautiful, um, small knife. This knife made this job doable for me because it worked. I didn't have to push it. It wasn't fighting with me. It was, it was helping me. It was guiding me. Oh my goodness. Dear Randall, I hope you enjoy your new edition. Thank you so very much for your support. It's great to see our knife featured on your amazing videos, and we absolutely love your energy and passion for cooking. I hope you have a positively splendid week. All the very best, Dan at Parisi. So this is Dan, by the way. <gasps> Whoa. Wow, that's a beauty. Once again, perfectly made. Thanks, Dan. It's razor sharp. Like it almost could cut you without touching you. That's what, you know, and then it has like a weird energy. I'm not a hippie, but it's really an amazing knife. Anyways, lapin à la moutarde or mustard rabbits, basically. They are sustainable completely. And um, the meat is very lean and tender and not that gamey. It's, I mean, I hate to say it's like chicken, but it's, um, it's, kind of, it's kind of delightful. First thing you're gonna do is let your rabbit dry a little bit, which this is, has already done because I went out for a walk. And you're gonna liberally salt it. Now, you know, it's not gonna stick, it's not wet. Well, it'll stick. This is the exact same thing we do with beef bourguignon, whatever. I'm putting a lot of this on the, the table so that I can do this, liberally mopping up the salt. I watched a documentary called Garnet's Gold, beautiful name. Anybody seen that? It's about an Englishman who went up into the highlands when he was 38 for an unknown reason and got completely lost. It's wild up there. If you go far enough up there, there ain't nobody there. And he fell down a, a hill and at the base of the hill, he found a staff stuck in a stone. It's a true story. So he was rescued miraculously by fancy pants fishermen who went to this like completely secluded 
cove for no reason to go fishing. So all his life he wondered about this staff and he found out that there was gold that was buried uh, it to fund Bonnie Prince Charlie to take over England back for the Stuarts and that by the time the gold came to England, the war was over and so they hid the gold. And his theory was that under the stick was where the gold was, Garnet's gold. I thought it was great. Uh, so here we go. This is liber liberally salted. This happens to be oregano. You could use thyme. Uh, always be careful with sage. Too much sage can give a medicinal taste. I'm just gonna chop these roughly. We're going to cook a whole rabbit whose name was Steve. And these are his front legs. These are his back legs. And this is his back, his loin, his tenderloin, which is here. I chose to keep it on the bone. It's sort of like a crown of chicken, which is just the, the breast with no limbs. <laughs> and these are uh, pieces of the enclosure, so of his body. These are small, and I'm gonna kind of leave them in the pot and let them disintegrate a little more. You see how it's very, it's very lean, leaner than beef, that's for sure. Anyways, here we go. Let's make lapin à la moutarde, which simply means rabbit with mustard. Half a stick of butter. What we're gonna do is brown the rabbit, remove it, and then start the sauce, and then put the rabbit back in and cook it. I'm actually gonna take some of this out because this is a small pan. Here we go. We've got some sizzling butter. I'm just browning this in butter, okay? Not cooking it. Don't crowd. Like coq au vin, this is the only brown it's gonna get. Is he right here? I'm gonna put a little pepper in here. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in here to prevent the butter from burning. Just browning, you're not cooking, okay? Browning rabbit takes a few minutes. Browning rabbit takes time. Browning rabbit takes a few minutes. Browning rabbit takes time. Okay, all right, I'm gonna lower this heat a little bit because it's too hot. Now, I'm gonna just scrape this up a little bit, even though it's very yummy. And I'm gonna add my shallots. I'm gonna cook these until they're a little bit softened. And then we're gonna deglaze. So all this yummy flavor that we got from Steve will be deglazed in about two seconds with white wine. Put in the herbs. Put in about a cup of wine. I want this to boil, so I'm gonna crank it a little bit. As a dinner partier, think what you're making. Try not to be so, ah! about every recipe. Baking, in the beginning, you have to be. But I'm just saying, don't, don't feel like you're like, that seems like a lot of butter. You're probably right. Um, this is boiling, so I'm turning it down. I'm gonna add some cream. A little bit less than a cup. And this is gonna cook down, don't forget. And now I'm gonna add the mustard. They want you to add a, approximately a quarter cup of um, Dijon and a little bit of uh, seeded mustard. I'm guessing a quarter cup. I'm gonna mix that around. And remember, this is a very French concoction. I'm gonna boil this a little bit so it reduces. And I'm gonna put in some seeded mustard and I'm gonna taste it. The sauce is ridiculous. Those French, man, they know what they're doing in the kitchen. In the traditional recipe, you put in little tiny new potatoes in there. Just use the little potatoes and cut them in half. Or parboil them and then put them in. Okay, I'm gonna put in my Rabbit and his juices, nestling him, nestle away, nestle, nestle, uh, getting it to a boil and then I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer like any braise. I might slightly cover the pot. Like I've told you guys before, a simmer is not a boil, okay? If you boil this, you're gonna have boiled rabbit. You don't want that. You want very slowly cooked rabbit in mustard sauce, right? So that will take about 20 minutes. This looks exactly like when I've seen it in a restaurant. All right, I'm gonna turn this down. I'm gonna loosely cover this with a gap. And then I might turn the pieces over in about 10 minutes. 
maybe eight minutes. I'll turn the pieces over. And we'll see what happens. I'm just gonna take this out because I don't wanna cook this to hell and back, right? But I wanna reduce the sauce a little bit. So this is a perfectly cooked rabbit. It's falling off the bone, which is perfect. And now I'm gonna crank this. Um, this is reducing very rapidly. Okay, I like this. It's getting nice and thick. I'm gonna see, be very French, and see if it's at nap, which means when it coats the back of a spoon. Okay, back we go with our Stephen the Rabbit. Now, in my opinion, this is a, an absolutely gorgeous pan that's perfectly suitable to bring to the table. If you feel otherwise, you can put it in a serving dish. Lapin à la moutarde. Consider, consider eating rabbits. Uh, they are pretty sustainable, okay? So here we go, that's it. Couscous, what is couscous? Well, really, it's pasta, okay? People think it's a seed or something, it's not. It's pasta, it's Middle Eastern pasta. Why aren't we making more couscous? It cooks in five freaking minutes. I accidentally bought whole wheat couscous, which is a little different. I didn't read the label. It's organic, so I think that's what I read, but I didn't read that it was whole wheat. It smells great. Basically, you it's one to one, maybe a little over in the liquid to the ratio. Before you do it, you wanna maybe saute some onions or something in the bottom and uh, have some little fresh herbs to throw in at the end which I don't have because I forgot to buy them. So here we go. I'm gonna just quickly use this butter and I'm gonna fry off some onions. Just frying it off. I don't have any parsley, so I'm just gonna leave this. So this, I'm literally just sauteing this in butter, no problem. Mrs. Maud was truly terrified of walking in the city, immobilized, so was uh, Joni. I've worked with a lot of different dog problems. I've never worked with a dog who was fearful. So I started using Campbell's Jolly Method. So first of all, I'm just gonna put a little over a cup of stock in here, wait for it to come to a, bur a burl. So Campbell's Jolly Method is using your body language and your voice to tell the dog that the things that it's frightened of are not important. What happens is you end up looking like a completely insane person walking down the street with your huge sun hat, your ridiculous outfit, your two Jack Russells going, no big deal, come on, come on, why is that so much fun, no big deal. Oh, no big deal, no big deal. Oh, so good, so, oh, good dog, good dog. No big deal, no big deal. The entire walk. But let me tell you something, man, it worked. And it took a solid three weeks, 21 days of Campbell's Jolly Method. Now she stops once a walk. And it's usually something extreme like a direction change or a pneumatic you know, brake, those psh brakes, or a, a big truck. What they tell you is your dog will literally, you can watch them change their mind about what they're scared of. So I would look at her, and also when you're waiting, you just keep a gentle pressure on the line like this. Just a little gentle pressure, and you keep your body like this. Ah, come on, let's go. She would get up from the freeze. It was incredible. And they tell you to look for the shake out, and when they go from a freeze to a shake, it means that you've succeeded 100%. That they, they're shaking off the freeze. It's so gratifying, I can't tell you. It's boiling enough for me. One cup of kith kith. I'm putting this in, quickly removed from heat. Let stand five minutes. I'm gonna just stir it gently. It's already making couscous. Uh, five minutes, I'm gonna fluff it up if you did have some cut up parsley, you would throw it in then. It's just a light side. It's nice, it's a change from rice. It makes a change, the postman said, from your ordinary meat and veg. So try it out. Now we're gonna make our croutons. Basically in your timing, your soup is hot. They can see you do this. I'm gonna boil these, but I'm gonna keep an eye on them. Now this is an experimentado. I'm trying to make Parmesan crisps, which are featured heavily in like GBM and MCTP UK and all these things, are simply grated Parmesan that they put in a circle and it makes those beautiful crisps that never work at home. I'm seeing if maybe if there's such a thing as a Gruyere crisp, that's what that is. Anyways, we cleverly lined this because it's gonna make a monstrous mess. And we're putting it in the boiler and we're not leaving the room. If your friends are here, you can't go play celebrity or something with them. 
or whatever you want, pig or cards against humanity, you can't do that. You have to keep your eye on this. So these are thick. It's country style, you know? They may be a little too thick. I usually take my crouton, if it's made correctly, if it hasn't disintegrated into the soup, I will move it or take it, put it in the saucer and sort of eat it like this with my onion. I don't eat onion soup, but I've had soup with croutons on them. See how it's melting? See how it's melting. This is what they should look like. Super croutony. Let's assemble a soup. I'm gonna put a little soup in the ramekin. I'm gonna to try to get broth ratio correct. And here's the onion ratio. There you go. I'm taking a crouton. I'm placing it on top of the soup. And then I'm gonna cut some fresh chives, which of course taste like onions. I'm doing this without my glasses. Did the little thing, it did work. What can I tell you? I'd eat that and I don't even eat onion soup. French onion soup a la dinner party tonight. Swiss chard, this couldn't be easier. Now I wish this was beautiful baby kale, but it's not. <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of tear it a little bit. And I'm literally, it's slightly wet from being washed, which is fine. Any sort of really thick stalk, get rid of it. Tearing it roughly, country style. That's a little bit thick. It's all gonna fit. Huzzah! Don't worry about this. You're like, oh my God, she's so crazy. This is how you cook vegetables without messing up your entire stove top, I discovered. I'm sprinkling over some red onion. Comme ça, voila, la, la. Olive oil. Salt. Dee dee dee. Now, dee dee dee. The rabbit is quite rich, you know. So we're going to put some lemon on this. So it's. I broke it. So it's um, bright. Pfeffer. Okay. Lemon, 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 lemon. This goes in a. 400 regular 360 convection oven until it's cooked. It's very fast and it doesn't make any mess. Keep an eye on it. If you need to, you can put a little rosé in the bottom, a little vermouth in the bottom, or a little stock in the bottom. If, if it's just sticking and burning, which it won't because you put olive oil. Put, trust your instinct. If it seems dry, put a little stock in the bottom. It makes a sauce also. Okay, so look how small it gets. I mean, it shrinks a lot. I would not serve this in this dish now because the dish is too, too big. How easy was that? So it's shard. It ain't hard to eat shard. This is still warm. You cannot cook this anymore, okay, the, the rabbit. But if you need to put it in a turned off, slightly warm oven for some timing issue, you can. This is our beautiful lapin à la moutarde, which is a rabbit in mustard sauce. First time I ever made it, pretty proud. And this is our beautiful couscous, which I am going to cut some chives into, which you will see at service. It just gives it a little green. Parsley's fine too. Let's take it to the stage. Today we made spring vegetable and herb and mushroom puffs. Wow, they're big. They sure are good. Then we made individual French onion soup. It's usually individual, but ours are even smaller and a little more elegant. Then we made lapin a la moutarde or mustard sauce rabbit. Luxurious, I mean, really a French specialty. We made roast chard the easy way. We made couscous, why aren't we making couscous more often? No one knew. And then we made the dessert of kings, clafouti. Anybody can make it. Funfetti. We want to thank you guys so much. We'll be back very soon with full meal episodes and shorts and all kinds of interesting 
tips and stupid things and smart things and fun things and you never know what's going to happen on dinner party tonight. So please click uh, and subscribe and hit the bell and, and just know how much we appreciate you and really love you. And also, thanks for watching. Browning rabbit takes a few minutes. Browning rabbit takes time. Browning rabbit takes a few minutes. Browning rabbit takes time.